chilling story about a woman who's speaking out after she lost her husband. He was shot and killed right in front of her on Christmas Eve. Our Henry Lee joins us now with the story. Henry. Julie, she tells me she's more than heartbroken. She's known him since the two attended a technical school together in Hayward. They weathered homelessness together, and now she's at a loss as she struggles to move forward without him. My heart is not broken. It's like my soul is like shattered all through my body, like I'm shaking all the time. Like, Tanya Mixon is devastated. It. Her 50-year-old husband, Marlon Jones, was shot and killed in front of her on Christmas Eve outside their home in Oakland's Pill Hill neighborhood. That's the most devastating thing in the world that happened to me because that's my husband. He took care of me. You know, he loved me like nobody ever loved me. You know, he treated mm -hmm. me like a wife's supposed to be treated. It happened just after midnight, early the morning of December 24th in their 28th and Telegraph. Jones had just returned home after getting groceries. His wife joined him at their Lexus when someone walked up behind him as he was checking the VIN of the car for insurance purposes. She says her husband greeted the man with a casual, what's up? Guy just said, what the fuck you saying here? I will kill you and put out the gun and shot my husband. Yeah, I believe it. What's up? He, the guy could have interpreted that as like, what's, what's up? Like, what's up with you, man? Like, yeah, I mean, he, he got it's, it's that. That's what I was telling you. Like, it's that quick, man, with sons. Like, because like, what's up means multiple things with sons. What's up means like, what's up? Hi. What's up also means like, what you doing walking behind me at 12 o'clock at night, nigga? Or what you doing around here, nigga? And that guy could have thought that. The guy could have genuinely meant like, hey, hi, but it means other things. And it, when you say it the other way it means, it's instant. It's like dude to white people, but only with way more violence as the potential. Like we can say dude in so many different ways and it's yeah. the inflection of it. Right. Yeah. Dude, like dude. Or dude, but none of it leads to violence. Yeah, but I can see how this guy got None killed. None of it. I'm not saying that I understand how he got killed, but I see it. Oh, right. I think a lot of y'all won't see it. I see it. I see how it happened. He's a big black guy. Another black guy walks past. What's up? What's up? Nigga, I kill your ass out here. And then what? how you respond to that is like, you know, do you, do you bitch out? Do you try to defuse it? Does that even matter? Because right. it's already up. You know? So much of it feels like a trap. Well, no, it's not even a trap because it's just cat. It's random. Like, had that guy not walked past, nothing would have happened. Or if that guy had not said anything, if that guy had said, he, sometimes you say, What's up? Because you're just um, nervous because, like, you see a black guy walk. He He's out by his car at night, and a black guy walks past. You're thinking you're going to get carjacked. So you might just speak out of nervousness. You know what I'm saying? Or to let him, let him know you're there. I can like yeah, exactly. see myself doing that, for sure. Yeah. It seems I like mean, you make a noise, do something. Not yeah, leave. So Oh, he treated me like a wife's supposed to be treated. It happened just after midnight, early the morning of December 24th, in their 28th and Telegraph. Jones had just returned home after getting groceries. His wife joined him at their Lexus when someone walked up behind him as he was checking the VIN of the car for insurance purposes. She says her husband greeted the man with a casual, what's up? Guy just said, what the fuck you saying here? I will kill you and put out the gun and shot my husband. Oakland police and... Yeah, that's oh, no. no. And that guy probably wasn't crazy or, you know what I'm saying? It was a, probably a normal son, man. I mean, he might have been a thug. Or he might have been crazy like the other crazy, like, you know, the not guilty. Yeah, but that guy wasn't probably, that guy didn't not have insane. to be like, yeah, no, not, yeah, he didn't have to be insane. He just had to be about it, about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what these shits or however they call it. Um, Stand on is, that quick, is that quick, man? Like, it, it, it literally... Is that quick? It don't take nothing more than that, man. Um, yep. She says her husband greeted the man with a casual, "What's up?" Guy just said, 
What the fuck you saying? I will kill you and put out the gun and shot my husband. Oakland police and paramedics came quickly, but Jones, who everybody called Mac Lynn, died at the scene. A motive for the shooting not known. The couple have been married since 2017, but were together off and on for three decades, surviving homelessness, COVID, and other challenges. Her kids called him Papa. My husband was a giving person. You know, he would help anybody. It don't matter who it was, no race, no nothing. He was just like a genuine person. It's like very shocking. We were very surprised that it happened around here. A neighbor who didn't want to be identified said Jones was well known in the area. Very easygoing guy. He was very easygoing, quiet. You know, like I say, he helped everybody. You ask anybody in the neighborhood about him, they'll tell you the same thing I'm telling you. Mixon says she wants to move out, not knowing if she too could be in danger after her husband was killed. It's like surreal, it's horrible. And I just hope that they find whoever did it because this don't make no sense. She is hoping for justice for her husband. Anyone with information is asked to contact Oakland Police. Live that quick but it is that quick yikes <laughs> but what i mean is that the trap is like there's nothing you can do uh, you decided to leave your house that day and the fate of it all you know it was just the interaction he was never going to get out of this just by the the fate of his decisions yeah, that guy was always well, it's been a violent 24 20- yeah, that guy, that guy was definitely uh, going to kill somebody. Right, and you just happened to be that guy. There was nothing you can do about it. Well, it's no been a violent 24 you, hours. You place your stuff. in Oakland as the city investigates three deadly shootings overnight, bringing the total number to four in just the first week of the new year. The most recent was this morning around 745 on Plymouth Street, where police found one person shot and killed. Not far away, a woman was killed on San Leandro Street about 540 last night. And the third was a store clerk on Linden Street, just a block away from McClyman's High School. That's where Dahlin is for us tonight, talking to his friends and family and neighbors about the census loss. Dah? Friends and neighbors have been coming by this corner market to light candles, drop off flowers, and pray for the victim's family. They say the man was a fixture and beloved in this community. The family identified the murder victim as 46-year-old Majed Alazani. The robbery happened on Saturday night, just after 8 o'clock inside Orlando's market. The family tells me his brother owns the corner store, and Majed had worked there for years. I want them to remember him as a hard-working man from the Middle East, trying to live the American dream, and he was just doing to provide for his family. Family friend Bazuri Hassan says Majed came from Yemen. His wife and four kids live near the store. Unbelievable because the family, the kids, everybody have to suffer. Bazuri says he learned from the family the robbers were a couple of young people. It's unclear why they shot Majed. Well, a couple of young people, so that <laughs> solves it right there. <laughs> it's so, it's, and it's only like, it's only some people that get this, this kind of, privilege of not getting named clubs every other group like oh these are white looking umbritos this is a blonde haired blue eyed white woman i mean no matter what they don't unbelievably specific or yeah they 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 name anyone except sun people Mm. oh he was wearing shoes he was breathing air yeah, the details too. He was wearing dark, thick rimmed glasses with a backwards cap and a. He was wearing know, jeans. Like, what the yeah. fucking do? But I mean, they'll even tell you the details of like the cuffs on their, the, uh, like the cuffs on their sweatshirt, but they will not tell you the race. It's remarkable. It's, it's funny to me in, in an absurd way. Jed during oh, the war and how much they got away. A neighbor's door camera recorded one gunshot. Police say family members did not wait for the ambulance and drove Majed to the hospital themselves. He died a short time later. They've had ATMs yanked out of it to the point where they weren't dealing with ATMs for a while. Um, There have been several incidents in the past of people trying to come in here and rob the store. Travis Charles lives across the street from the market and has known Majed for almost... This is the people who live in the neighborhood. That's also another indication. 12 right. years. He says Majed was a generous man and sold him a car last March, even though he didn't have enough money. He needed a car to get to work. 
I gave them fifteen hundred as a down payment, and every time I got paid, I gave them a thousand here, five hundred here. He never, he never rushed me, never uh, bugged me. Many neighbors and longtime customers are heartbroken. They say Majed was a kind man. I've seen his family grow up, and his kids are. He has a beautiful family, and I just feel awful for him. Missouri is angry over the loss of a friend. He's fed up and wants the mayor to declare a state of emergency. Get some National Ooh. Guard out here. Get the military. Try to tackle the line. situation. If the city doesn't do more, he worries more people will die. Nonstop. Whatever you do, robberies. don't fund the police. <laughs> bring the bring the military. Bring the tanks and the, the choppers. But, but see, uh, this is what I was talking about with perverse incentives. Okay, so you have a food desert, right? This guy comes in, he's thinking, well, there's an opportunity here. There's a glut in the market. I can open up a store. Classical economics tells you that he should be able to make money making, you know, providing a service. He where, will, though. He will make money. Well, but losing your life isn't really uh, a net right. gain. You know, but right. I mean, your inventory is stolen. Right. That, but what that's what I'm saying is like everything is thrown off because of this one group that provides an an exorbitant amount of violence. Yeah. Um, yeah All our systems are done off. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just so sad. But from the first story of the night to the last story of the night, it's just a big bowl of sad. And on that note, man, great show, man. Salute Thanks everybody, me. man. Same black time. Same black channel. I'm out of here. Peace out. Salute, y'all.